Hey guys, so as usual, I wanted to bring a tier list of rogue decks using dueling book data from Wajio Scope, and you can check my older videos to check out how the tier score is calculated. And before I continue, big thanks to my sponsors as always, links and discount codes in the description below. Now this was my overall meta tier list by the data that I shared last week, and so for this video, we'll be covering decks that are not seen here in tier 1 and 2, with the exception that I will still be including heroes as rogue, I do think Dark World is also rogue, but it was just played so much on dueling books still that I'll leave it at tier 2 for now, even though power level wise it's not actually there. There's of course many decks that Wide Scope unfortunately cannot identify still, and some of the notable ones include Naturia, Exosister, Kashira, Crystal Beast, Labyrinth, and Dinomorphia among many other decks. Now these decks are actually pretty solid rogue contenders right now because most of them are built to combat tier elements, but sadly they will not be a part of this video. So as usual, we start the rogue tier with Hero, which among the rogue decks available in this format, this is definitely a strong choice because if it gets to go first, it does have a good tier matchup thanks to Dark Law banishing everything. There's also obviously a huge player base for Hero at all times, really helping to get its representation up, and we'll get some regional tops here and there. Then we have Sky Striker, which seems to really make it on here because it's just another fan favorite deck that sees a lot of play, but definitely not seeing as much success demonstrated by its 40% match win percentage. While it's ranked high on this rogue list, probably not the best option to play for most players as this is a deck with a very high ceiling, and if you're not experienced with this deck, it's going to be tough navigating through the Bestials and Grave Shufflers right now. Next we have a rogue deck that seems to be climbing and climbing recently and that is pure punk. I recently did a budget punk deck profile that you can check out, although from what I'm told the more standard lists play a lot of bestials so I guess that's kind of one of the few ways to survive in this format. It's a combo synchro summoning strategy with some cool artwork and definitely not the best to play in time considering you're just burning yourself half the time with their effects. Lastly, in this tier A is the Dragoon Turbo Dex. It's got a solid match win percentage at 50%, and if you are able to summon Dragoon the right way with Dark Magician and Red Eyes, then those pop and burns are actually going to be really huge, even against a deck like Tier Limits. Even when Dragoon was first released, it's a card that helped out Rogue decks a lot more than the meta ones, so this is kind of like their cool uncle. Starting off B tier is Math Mech, which actually did not even make an appearance in my overall meta tier list this month, although I guess in the last week there's been a bit more play with the deck really vanished after the release of Bestials and the Grave Shufflers, but it's still holding on with that 49% win percentage. Having lots of ways to do your 1 card combo to set up some negates or hand rip is nice, but in this current format, it's certainly a lot harder to pull off. Then we have Zodiac, which has gained popularity thanks to the DB Grinder. It seems to be a blind second strategy with main deck Shifter, and it's pretty fun when you can attack directly with Borbo and basically make something like a 6 material Zeus and clear boards. Solid win percentage at 53% as well, and I'm sure we'll see someone at a regional top with this somehow. Next we have Dinosaurs, which while it is no longer a tier 1 strategy, you do have to give it credit for being a popular rogue strategy for a very long time. The Grave Shufflers can really mess this deck up as well, which makes it hard since traditionally Dinos are a going second deck, although it can be built as going first combo heavy option. Then we have Ad Ignister, and you always have a couple of strong players on Dueling Book do well with this deck regardless of the format, so if you're a skilled pilot, you can definitely still pull this deck off in this format. Lots of fusion based decks even play Starving Venom just to be able to out tower monsters like Arrival at Ignister, so the respect is still somewhat there. And then we have Quickly Forgotten deck in Eldritch and all of its associated variants. I'm surprised the win percentage is not even lower as the best shields can really just end any kind of win condition this deck has. The usual powerhouse floodgates like Skill Drain is not too amazing in this format, particularly when tier elements have the planet to pop it, and Eldritch is a strategy that cannot use floodgates like Necro Valley to combat tiers either. But eventually, Bestials and Ashizu Shufflers will get hit in some capacity, and Eldritch will always be solid enough to at least be a strong rogue contender. Next we have Madolce, which as I explained in my previous tier list videos, has a decent tier matchup as it aims to shuffle things away from the grave. It's a bit of a fan favorite archetype as well and can set up a pretty mean board presence with the negate, some shufflebacks, and some form of card destruction protection. The Vernasov cards can help this strategy out a lot as well, so a solid rogue choice at the current moment. We then start off tier C with Silent Mangrate, which is another fan favorite strategy that is also quite budget. A grindy and consistent deck that can slap a lot of hand traps, it sadly does lose hard to the Grave Shufflers, although it's at least immune to Bistrals. It can turbo out Dweller or Baguska going first quite easily, which is useful in this format, but going second, you're gonna need a lot of hope to play through what tier puts up, but at least this deck can make Update Jammer, Axis Code, Talker, OTK pretty easily. 
Then we have Earth Machines, which sort of always gotten the flack of having so many steps involved in its combo lines to end on a pretty mediocre board, or at least that's how opponents view them. In previous formats, one of this deck's strengths was that it can play under Skill Drain, but now that Skill Drain is not the most effective Floodgate, it sort of lost one of its strong points. Still a cool deck that boasted a strong 55% match win percentage, and Machina is one of my favorite archetypes of all time and I'd certainly like to play this deck sometime. Next we have Virtual World, which actually also had a great win percentage of 58%, although of course, probably the ones that are still playing Virtual World are the die-hard ones that know the deck really well. This deck has some counter tier element strategies, such as putting out Chen Chen, which is like a macro cosmos, not to mention it has a lot of level 6 plays, so it can make Wallow, which actually is a quick effect that can disrupt tier fusion plays. The downside of this deck though is its brickiness, so you'll have to live with that. Then we have the return of the Pendulum deck in Draco Slayers. I find the representation of this deck has died down quite a bit in the last month, as it was previously getting some tops actually, since it can search any field spell like Necro Valley or Zombie World. Being a Pendulum deck definitely is combo heavy, and usually Pendulum decks don't have as much room for hand traps, so it becomes pretty reliant on having to go first. Still a solid rogue deck with a variety of tools, and at least has made the Pendulum mechanic playable right now. Next, we have another fan favorite classic in Black Wings, and I recently did a deck profile on this strategy, so go check that out. Its end board with the double Black Wing Assault Dragon basically makes your opponent lose 1400 life points with every monster effect they activate, so that could potentially be problematic. Really cool to see that this deck has some representation even at this age, and hopefully it can top a regional somewhere. Then we have Plunder Patrol, which seems to be getting some hype lately, and when the Adventure Token stuff first came out, this deck was one of the better rogue options as well. Has a pretty interesting gimmick in equipping themselves to pirate ships, and since Ash is not seeing as much play as in the past, I guess this deck can shine a bit more. I'd keep an eye on this deck moving forward as a solid rogue option to play. Next we have another classic in Shadal, which admittedly I think is seeing a boost in numbers because this can get paired with tier elements quite easily, as demonstrated by its 63% win percentage. Hard to believe that Dogmatica Invoke Shadal was once a tier 1 strategy and is now nowhere to be seen, but there are a lot of diehard Shadal fans out there and Winda can be pretty decent, although it can just get easily super polyed right now, or just not matter at all when there's so many Flunder players. Lastly, in this section we have DDD, which actually had a solid 51% match win percentage and probably the expert DDD players are the only ones left running this deck. I did hear that the release of the new support like Griffin made this deck's combo line a lot more streamlined than in the past, but still quite a hard deck to master and maybe not the best choice to start off with if you're relatively new to the game. And in the other tier we have True Draco, and every time this deck makes an appearance on tier lists, I just have to ask who is still playing True Draco right now. I guess it doesn't get affected by bestials and the Grave Shufflers don't have as a huge impact as it would against other decks, although shuffling away your targets for Disciples or your True King's Return will suck a bit. It's probably the cheapest deck listed on here though, so something to look into if you want to start the game slowly. Lastly, we have my beloved Cyber Dragons, although I'm certainly not loving that 33% win percentage. It's hard to play this strategy in this format with Bestials and Grave Shufflers, but I have been working really hard on a branded Cyber Dragon list, so I'll be releasing that very very soon this week. I definitely want to always keep trying to make this strategy playable and OTK some opponents with Cromertech Rampage Dragon. Alright guys, so that was it for this month's Rogue tier list, hope that was interesting. We're about a month away from Photon Hypernova format, which might make Rogue decks even more unplayable than it already is, but if you're like me, and you like your pet decks, I'm sure you'll find a way to survive. As always, a big thanks to my Patreons Eileen Dice Queen, Bolt Spider, Cybernetic, Brandon Jaren, Bear Lord, Spooky Boogie, Steven Phillips, and Chaz Blanks as always for supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, link down below. Take care guys.